Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. This is your friend Shinobi, and in today's video, we're gonna talk about iPad OS 15, which was recently launched to the public, and this is the official version. So I've already made a video on iOS 15, so you can watch that from the cards above. So this is just gonna be about iPad OS 15. So I have the iPad 6th gen and I've installed iPad OS 15 on that. But there are a few like features missing from the usual version. So I'm gonna talk about everything. So if you're interested in this particular topic, then make sure to stick till the end. With that said, let's hit that intro. Alright, so to start off, you can finally add widgets to your iPad home screen, but they are not fully free to move. They just snap wherever Apple has decided to put the grids on and yeah, that's about it. And you also get access to the app library now. So you can either swipe to the absolute end of your pages to get to the app library or you can just click the option present in the dock, which is very handy honestly. And you can also remove or hide pages directly from the edit menu, which is a very good thing because now you can have a clean home screen with just a dock, which is gonna look really good. And I don't really like how it looks more like a phone interface rather than a tablet interface when you are in the portrait mode. Yeah, it just looks weird. I don't like it at all. So the previous version looked like a tablet, but now it again looks like a phone. Yeah, so I don't like the portrait version, but the landscape version looks really nice. All right, so the next big change in iPadOS 15 is with FaceTime. So now you can share the links for your FaceTime calls with anyone. So if they have an Android or a Windows device, it doesn't matter. You can share the link with them and they can join in through their browser, which is a great thing. And it is like more welcoming now so that others can also join because in India where I stay, most people don't use iMessage or basically iPhones. So yeah, it is very helpful now. Yeah, you do miss out on a few exclusive features, but at least they can join in now. All right. And also spatial audio and portrait mode have been added, but it doesn't really work on my iPad 6th gen. So I believe you need the A12 Bionic chipset, which is present on the iPad 8th gen. So from that and above, anything above that, you'll be able to use spatial audio and portrait mode. But unfortunately on the 6th gen, you don't have that. Now, continuing with the sorrow trend of having no weather app on the iPad and also no calculator app. The next big thing and a very useful feature that has been added with iPadOS 15 is something called as Quick Notes. So Quick Notes is a feature which lets you quickly jot down something or add links or images in a small notepad, okay, which you can access by swiping up from the right corner with your Apple Pencil. So if you paste any links in this quick note so, and whenever you visit that website again, so the quick note with this link will pop up from the right side, a small pop up will be there. You can click that and you can keep continuing like taking notes on that website if you want, which is pretty cool, honestly. And all your quick notes are saved inside a new folder inside the notes app called as quick notes. And also in the notes app, you now have the option to add tags in your notes, which really helps in finding your notes more quickly. And also you can mention people in shared notes so that they will be able to catch up on your work and see like what is the information, which is also a good one. After this, there has been a big redesign with Safari. It's mostly bigger on the iOS version, but yeah, on even on the iPad version, it looks more like a desktop browser now with the tabs being more organized. So you can just swipe between the tabs right now and uh, like select those, which is pretty cool. And the menus have changed a little bit here and there. And now you have support for extensions on Safari, which is an amazing thing. So yeah, you can add extensions just like you add extensions in your desktop browser. So you can add extensions in Safari, which is pretty cool. And it takes a mobile browsing experience to the next level. All right. So in the maps, in the Apple Maps app, there are new 3D and AR maps for a few selected cities around the world. And uh, yeah, it is there. I don't really use Apple Maps, so I don't really want to show you guys that. But it is there. If you use Apple Maps, you'll find it helpful. The next change has been with the notifications. So the notification center has been revamped a little bit. So now all the notifications have these rounded edges around them which looks pretty good honestly and the notifications are more sorted now. So the grouping is better and you now have access to something called as notification summary through which 
you can schedule at what time of the day you want to get certain notifications so you can schedule that and all those notifications will be delivered to you at that particular time so that you can check them out if you miss them throughout the day now another pretty good change is that you have a new multitasking menu whenever you open an app so whenever you open an app on your ipad you'll see three dots at the top and when you click on those three dots you'll have three kind of multitasking options so basically there will be one where you can get like two apps side by side and there is another in which you can get a full screen app and a floating window and another one is that in which you can get two side by side apps and a floating window on top of that which is pretty cool it is not like that versatile as a desktop but yeah it is there and it is now more easier to access and also when you open multiple instances of any app right now so you'll see those instances like popping up below so right now it only works with safari so when you open multiple instances of safari you'll see all those like queued below which makes it easier to sort them out and remove them so in the photos app and all the other apps there is a new section called as shared with you so in here everything that has been sent to you on imessage will be here you can find it here may, may it be links or like photos videos anything those will be here so you can quickly find them if you have missed that in the chat or something so yeah the shared with you tab is here which is pretty cool after that in the photos app itself you now have the option for memories which is kind of like a show reel of your most favorite photos according to the ai so yeah it will create a collage or a video type of thing with some music and all which is fine i guess all right so the next change that has been made is called as focus mode so focus mode has been introduced and yeah it lets you create and use different profile modes for like do not disturb or work or gaming or something like that and you can like create and use different profile modes and you can also customize them in any way that you want you can do so many things with this and it is basically do not disturb with a lot of steroids on and yeah uh, uh, as like you keep using this so the ai will uh, keep creating automatic profiles for you to make your work life balance better and yeah finally we have a low power mode on the ipads which is a very good thing because previously up until ipad os 14 there was no low power mode so with this now you can extend the battery life of your ipad for another few hours which is going to be really helpful in those crunchy times when you don't have your charger because the ipad takes a lot of time to get charged and also in the photos app i forgot to mention that you now have the option to view exif data so you can just swipe up on any photo or video and you'll be able to see all the data related to that may it be like the storage the resolution on which device it was taken from where it was taken and and everything else here so it is now there in the photos app also the new spotlight search is more smarter basically so now if you search anything you will be able to do a system wide search so it will search through your files your contacts your media everything and it will show you a collective result which is really nice and it it makes like searching something very quick also there is a live text feature which has been introduced with ios and ipad os 15 but it really doesn't work on my 6th gen so it also needs the 812 bionic chip and later so the iphone 10r or the ipad 8 gen and later you know to use it which is a bummer but yeah basically with live test you can just copy any kind of text from any kind of images either on your phone or from any kind of website which is a very good feature but yeah it is not there on the ipad 6 gen and lastly we have performance performance uh, on ipad os 15 on my ipad 6 gen has been pretty good overall there are only a few minor hiccups when like opening and closing the app library there are minor like frame drops but apart from that i haven't seen any frame drops anywhere else and it also doesn't get heat up and yeah that's about it from my side about ipad os 15 on the ipad 6 gen so if you like this video i've already made a video on I ios 15 basically on the iphone 10 so you can check that video out from the cards above and if you like this video then hit that thumbs up button and also subscribe to the channel to stay notified about my new uploads hit that bell icon and yeah that's basically it i'm your friend shinobi and i'm signing out peace